So it's that time again. My UPS has got a dead battery. It's only been about a year, I think, since I did the last one. Got another battery. I might have another look at the charging circuitry on this thing, see if I can back it down a bit. Maybe it's got too much charging voltage or something, so it's killing the batteries a bit sooner than it should. But I'm getting kind of sick of replacing the things. So this is my bench UPS. So this is used to run my bench gear. All right, so I've got a UPS here to help protect it. So any surges stuff like that should be less of a problem. And the outages means you know it won't be switching the gear on and off rapidly, that sort of stuff. So that's why this is doing. It's just running my bench. So it does. So it doesn't have a high loading. I don't run all my gear all at once. Well, very rarely anyway. And if I do, it probably within the range of this thing anyway. So generally, it's just sitting here with everything on standby, and the load indicator's just got one mark on it. One out of five, so it's not like it's loaded right now. Let's unplug the power and we'll see how long it lasts. Single power point. We should just turn off my lights. <laughs> and then we've got the actual power itself. Alright, so there we go. And with no load on it, see it's already dying. Alright. Not good. I want to get some lights back. Hmm. That lasted about 30 seconds to shut off and I literally just walked across the room, turned the light on, came back and it's gone off. So yeah, that's it. With no loading. It's definitely gone. So let's put it apart. Still got display on though. Barely. Shut the light down. There we go, it's completely off now. And obviously my other lighting here is off so we've had to try and make do. But anyway, let's get it apart. Okay, let's get the screws out. I've done this a few times now on this particular UPS, I've replaced it way too many times. I mean, they're supposed to last a lot of four or five years, these batteries, and I'm not getting anything like that out of them. So I'm going to look into this in a bit more detail, see if I can figure out the charging circuitry and drop the voltage down. But I'm pretty sure I've already done that. Um, pretty sure. Might be a different UPS, actually, I've done that too. One did battery. You see all the leakage here on the sides. Yeah, they don't last. So what I've got here is a nine amp hour battery. The original was a seven. They're basically the same size, so I'm not quite sure how they get that. Maybe it's slightly better technology. I don't know, but uh, actually, I installed this one oh three years ago. Maybe I'm remembering this wrong. That's weird. This much has the time disappearing. Three years ago, I did this one. I, I even mutt it. No, surely not. I felt like last year. Anyway, three years. Okay, that's not that bad. Mind you, it's been dead for about a year. Thinking about it. All this year it's been dead. So, yeah. Probably two and a half years. I'll go out of it. Okay. It doesn't seem like that long ago. That's just really weird. Oh, well. Let's get it out. So, I'll get these terminals off first. To make sure it's all dead. Even though there's a little bit of power left, you know. Kill it all off. There we go. And you get the negative off as well. Try and push it off. It's probably better talk for doing this, but, you know. Get that's off as well. So we've got this bracket here, we've got to take these nuts off. You get those out, then we get this bracket out, and there's also like a jacking bolt at the back here as well. It's another nut which pushes it out. That's doing very different right now, it's come loose. Thermal because it's against the transformer, I suppose. Yeah, so we get those out, we get the battery out. There's a modification I did. I've changed the voltage on this one already. That was just there, it's changing the voltage. Uh, it feels like just last year I did this. Hmm, getting old sucks. All right, it's got seven mil nuts. Let's get that. Having a nut driver makes it a lot easier to do. Used to do this a pair of pliers. Yeah, that wasn't fun. Anyway. I know what it was. Last year I did it sister. There's a sister one of these. Very similar, different version. That's right, that's what it was. Last year I did the other one. Yeah, this is V2. I've got another one which is GPS 650D, no V2. That's that's what I did last year, that's right. Now remember, that's what it feels like last year. It doesn't really want to come out. I've recapped this one as well. Yeah, I've recapped this one, I'm pretty sure. Is that the It's 105 degree rated. So look. Oh, there's a T bore over here, that's not one of mine. Maybe I didn't recap all of them. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know, oh, maybe it's the other one I recapped. Anyway, 
I remember now, last time I did this, I took the transformer out, lifted it out, shoved it back a bit. Now remember, let's do it. There's literally just two more nuts. There's always a technique to doing these things. It was a matter of figuring out what the technique is for this particular unit. Some are really easy. Um, this is a, bit, a little bit more involved. You know, if they design it slightly better, you know, as is usually the case. Right, lift that off. Now slide this back. Now we get this out. Here we go. Right, now we get the battery out from the other side. Right. Time, as AVE would say. Right. Check the battery sizes. And the new one's actually slightly smaller. It's a fraction shorter. Interesting. And that's supposed to be higher capacity. So you see they basically have identical specs, same voltages, initial current less than 2.7 amps and 2.1 amps. This has got a slightly lower initial current for charging. That's 20 hour rate. Does this say the hour rateage? It doesn't, does it? No. So that's 9 amp hours at 20 hour rate. So I'll have to know, well, we're curious about what a 7 amp hours rate is on this. Maybe it's just a marketing thing where this is rated at a 10 hour rate and that's rated at a 20 hour rate to give you a higher capacity for the same actual energy consumption. The slower the discharge rate, the more capacity you actually get out of a battery. That's just the way it works, actually have like a recovery thing. I don't know, maybe they are basically the same capacity, just a marketing rubbish. Anyway, we'll see. So I'll stick with that on this and we'll put it in. All right, well, date's on. Let's refill it. I hate these things. Okay, that's it. Back in place. Let's refit this. Refit that before I forget about it. It just bugs me a lot that these UBS supplies have this issue where they just don't last, you know, it's just kind of irritating. They should last a lot better than they do. I mean, okay, I've got two and a half years out of that one. Which is still, you know, really, to me, a bit short. Because it's just sitting here on power most of the time. It doesn't actually get much cyclic use. I mean, it's, yeah, I do get a lot of outages here. But it's not really like that's going to be causing a problem. You know, I do get a fair amount. But they only usually, like, little surges and it will, you know, go off for, you know, 10 seconds or whatever and then come back on. So, I don't think it should be dying as quickly as they are. So I think it's probably over voltage from this thing, maybe, I don't know. I'm guessing, but I mean, I would have dropped this one down. Actually, I think the last time it only lasted, yeah. The last time it lasted about a year and a half. So I dropped the voltage down. We should make a note of these things. Um, instead of relying on my memory, that's not working too well anymore. Yeah, I dropped the voltage down after the last time it only lasted just over a year. And so it's lasted two and a half years now, so it's, also, it's definitely improved it. Okay, so that's something. So I'm also on the right track there by changing the voltages. So maybe I should change it some more. It is kind of concerning in a way that these chassis are reliant on a circuit board for rigidity across the top of them. Actually, before I put this board in, let me check these caps. I'm pretty sure I've recapped it, but I'm not sure because there's this one over here which I don't know. There's a match eater, which was something I would have put in. Just curious, maybe I missed the capacitor when I was doing the original refurb on it. There's a T ball as well over there. Yeah, I wouldn't have T ball brand. So probably a few I didn't do. Maybe they were fine at the time. They'll look alright. I can't see any bulge ones or anything. I think I've replaced this one. Shut this on. Don't short the battery out. <laughs> <laughs> am I getting distracted and putting the screws back in? I think I am. Let's get back to this. <laughs> I was like, we'll forget thinking I've already done it. No, no. Alright, let's get the positive on. And once you've got this on, it can become live and you can kill yourself. So be a, be a little bit careful with these. Get on, there we go. Nice and tight, at least that's good. 
So that's on. Everything else is on. I didn't get those off. So it should be alive. Let's find out. Well, it did that much. Yep, yeah, cool. And that's at least working. Right, obviously your battery's not charged, so that's fine. So I'm not going to put a case on yet. I'm going to plug it into power. And I want to look at these charging voltages again. I might let it charge the battery up for a day or so. And then um, look at it again. And just see what we're getting. Because I'm concerned maybe the voltage is still a little bit too high. I mean, maybe I should be sitting more at that 13.5 volt end. I think I'm going to drop it down. I think it was about 13.8. And I dropped it down about 13.7, 13.6. And I, I think. I'm not sure. But the, the voltage you see is going to be dependent on the state of the battery because it gradually comes up with the battery. Right, let's plug this thing in the power. Now one of the things I actually wish this did was auto power up. I've got another one which does auto power up but this particular one doesn't. I wish they did when the, if you know because the battery goes flat and it turns off when the power comes back on again they don't repower which is a bit of a pain. So the power going in, showing charging, yep yeah, that's all looking good. So let's have a quick probe around see if we can see what these charging voltages actually are. So we'll measure it on the board up here. 12.7 okay, is what we're getting right now. And that will probably come up. There you go, 12.72, 12.73. So as it's charging, it's going to increase, right? So I need to leave this going, let it stabilize, let it charge up, and then see what the voltage is sitting at. And maybe tweak the resistor value over here. What voltage am I getting on resistor? Let's go base off the battery negative. So we're getting 12.48 that side. 13.6 that side. Is it charging through that resistor? I don't actually remember. Maybe I just reduced the charging current, but not the charging voltage. But 30.6 at that point, it's looking kind of right, I suppose. It's not that high. I thought I'd just check these capacitors out and just check for ripple. And I've already gone around a bunch of them. Like I'll check this one here, for example. Be careful, you rest your hands, this is currently on. And you get a little bit of there, you know, 800 millivolts there, AC. I'm on AC on the meter. If I check this capacitor over here, getting seven and a half volts ripple on a capacitor. So that capacitor over there is definitely bad. That's a little bit high. But a lot of these other ones I was checking them and they were looking alright. So let's try and do this with the rest of my hands I'm stupid. It's looking quite bad too actually. So maybe there's two caps there. I thought I'd check that one already. Hmm. Check this one again. That's alright. So if you check for AC ripple that's one way of checking to see if the capacitor is okay or not because it should be smoothing it out. So that's zero there. That's alright. This one here, I don't know if I've checked that or not. That's alright. That's still 800 millivolts ripple on that one, which is probably a bit high. This one here, that's alright. So I think we've got three caps I really should replace. It looks like it anyway. This one's a little bit high on ripple, it's not too bad. But we've got these two here which look identical, I wonder if they're connected together or something. They may be. I think I'll replace those two caps over there and then I'll put it back into service. So that cap there was a T bore, 100 volt, 47 microfarad. It's still got another one, 47 microfarad. And then 40, it's a 63 volt. It's only got 12 volt across it though when I was checking it. So I'm not sure why it needs to be such a high voltage. That is across the negative battery rail and these MOSFET switchings here. So it's like it's a 12 volt supply going to the MOSFETs. Hmm, I reckon a 63 might be alright, even though it's got 100 in there. I, yeah, I reckon a 63 would do it, actually. It's only a suntan brand, it's not a very good brand, but that's good because it means I'll get rid of it. It's one I've obviously picked up years ago, so you know, I'll chuck this in. Alright, let's power this thing back up again and see how this looks. I had the battery disconnected then as well, when I did that, I should have mentioned that. Okay, power it back up. Let's see what we get now. See if it's any different. Marginally. 7.2 volts. So this is across the MOSFET. So maybe it's the MOSFETs creating the ripple on the line. Because it appears to be across the battery supply. So I'm pretty sure it may actually be nothing anyway. It may just be noise from the MOSFETs getting through. It's entirely possible. And that's the same with the other capacitor over here. Because it's got a pair. Two pairs. And this one's got the same kind of noise on it. So I'm guessing it's probably just that. Maybe it's nothing after all. But anyway, I've replaced the cap. At least I know that's alright. It's marginally better. So for the sake of completeness, we get the DER set up. Let's see what we get out of this cap, just so we actually have a meaningful measurement. Currently thinks it's an inductor, so it's probably not a good thing. 
<laughs> Series capacitance, there we go, let's tell you what it is. Are we getting a measurement from this? It could just be bad connections. It isn't a capacitor according to this, so yes, this cap is gone. Interesting. Let's do it again. This is all plugged in alright, isn't it? Yep. Uh, yeah, that's definitely completely open. That's not doing that thing. Hmm. I suppose you can see that done. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff, and give us a thumbs up and comments down below. I should really do the gestures the same time as the same with the words, shouldn't I? So, comments down below, thumbs up, and click the like, subscribe button down there somewhere, wherever it is. It's over there? Why is it over there? Oh, depends which page you're on. Okay, catch you later. Thanks for watching.